Good morning, guys. So today what I have here is a lesson for social studies, and the title is about the melting pot. So we're still looking at the middle colonies and how the people lived there and what they did, what kind of jobs they had, but today we're actually going to focus on how the middle colonies were called the melting pot. So before we actually start looking at that, let's do a little bit of a review. What I have here is a map of Europe and Africa over here, and then over here is North America. So these are all of the people that came to the middle colonies. People came from, I can't really read upside down, but they came from Africa, they came from Germany, they came from England, Ireland, Scotland, they came from all types of countries, Sweden, the Netherlands, all kinds of countries over in Europe and Africa. And they came by boat to North America and settled in the middle colonies. The main reason they came to the middle colonies was because of religious freedom there. So today what we're going to be looking at is how they came and settled and how their cultures became a melting pot. So let's look at what I have here on the table. Over here I have a big old crock pot, okay? And this guy is going to be like our melting pot. We're gonna pretend to put things in. I'm not gonna actually make anything right now, but I have some ingredients. I have some condensed milk and I have a bunch of different kinds of cheeses. So each of these kinds of cheese tastes differently if you eat it by itself. But if I took all of these and I dumped them into one big pot and I put some milk in there too and then I stirred it all up and heated it up together, what would happen to that taste of the different cheeses? What would happen? They would all blend together, right? They would become one melted sticky ooey gooey cheese and it would taste completely different than if you were just to eat mozzarella cheese by itself, right? And if you dipped a chip in there and ate it with some chips, it'd be a whole new cheese dip. So that's kind of the idea of what a melting pot is. They even have a restaurant called a melting pot where you can go and dip all kinds of stuff in different um, like gooey substances that they have there. So we're gonna be looking at how the middle colonies became a melting pot. First thing I want us to look at is page 129. If you need to pause the video and go get your um, social studies book, then go do that. And we're gonna look at page 129. So on this page, it says the title at the top, people from all over. People in the middle colonies came from different countries. Each country had its own culture. The middle colonies were a melting pot or a blend of many cultures. The colonists built homes as soon as they could. They remembered the homes they had left behind in their old countries. The new homes looked very much like their old homes. Different kinds of homes filled the middle colonies. So take a moment to look at the different houses on page 129 and see how they're all different. You'll see some made out of wood, some made out of stone, some look like a log cabin, others look like a barn, right? There's so many different kinds. So what we have here is each of the different countries and all of the people that came to the middle colonies, they all brought their own ideas of what a house should look like and they all started building it in the middle colonies. So it was like a big melting pot. They brought all of these ideas together, kind of like we had a bunch of different types of cheeses and they started to create new things in the new world where they settled. Okay, let's look at the next picture I have here. This is the one of the middle colony's home. So we, here we have a whole bunch of different houses. And if this is just a, one road on the middle colonies, 
um, somewhere, let's say in Pennsylvania, and they started to build houses all over the place, it would pretty soon look like a melting pot because all the houses would be mixed up in different areas and it wouldn't necessarily only look English and it wouldn't only look German, it would look like them all because they would build them in different, like they would build them on the same street and there'd be lots of kinds. Okay, now what I want you to do is read page 130 in your social studies book as I read it out loud. The people who came to the middle colonies brought many new traditions with them. A tradition is a special way of doing something for many, many years. The Puritans in the New England colonies, remember that's the northern colonies, it's not down in the middle colonies. The Puritans did not celebrate Christmas, but many people in the middle colonies did. The Dutch baked small Christmas cakes and gave us our word for cookies. Over time, the gingerbread cookie became a Christmas tradition in the colonies. Germans brought with them the tradition of giving gifts. Much later in the 1800s, they were the first to have Christmas trees in their homes. So all these people from different places in Europe that came to the, the New World, North America, they each brought different traditions with them for, for example, for Christmas. So it says that the Dutch brought the idea of making Christmas cookies and the Germans brought the idea of a Christmas tree in their house. So each of those are from different countries, but it, they're celebrating, celebrating the same holiday, Christmas. So if you look back on page 130, you'll see that tradition means a special way of doing something for many, many years. I'm sure that each of you has traditions that you do. Maybe you have a tradition that you do for birthdays every year or a tradition that you do for Easter or for Christmas. So a tradition is something that your family does and maybe your extended family like your grandparents, but you always do it and it's something special to you. One time, well, not one time, this is basically every year. For Christmas, my family, um, we have a tradition where at Christmas time we make this rice pudding and we hide a little almond inside of it. And when we eat the rice pudding, whoever finds the almond is basically the winner and they get a prize from that. That tradition came from Norway because that's where my family's from. And so a lot of people in Norway all have that tradition. And my grandparents came to America and they brought that tradition with them and now we have it. And so we've had our, some of our friends be able to experience that before. So our tradition is blending like in our melting pot with other Americans traditions. So traditions are something that can be shared. So in America, in the middle colonies, every country brought their traditions and pretty soon they started to mix together. So pretty soon America in the middle colonies had new traditions because they blend the Dutch and the German and the English and they created a special Christmas known to Americans. Let's look at this paper here. This says, I can scoot it down. It says, the melting pot of Christmas tradition. So up here you'll see that the English brought traditions for making decorations for Christmas. The Germans brought traditions of having a little nativity scene where baby Jesus is seen and the sheep and shepherds and such. The Dutch brought the tradition of making yummy cookies. And then also the Germans brought the tradition of decorating Christmas trees. So all of those combined created what we know it as our typical Christmas traditions here in America. So each of these countries brought their own special traditions and that leaves us with what we have today in America. Okay, let's go on to read page 100. And 31 this time we are moving into kind of a new topic 
and this is religions in the middle colonies and how the Dutch and the German and the English not only brought um, traditions for Christmas and other things, but they also brought their religious traditions. So let's read 131. It says that the middle colonies were a safe place for people of different religions. For this reason, there were different kinds of churches in the middle colonies. Dutch, German, and English people had their own churches. There were even a place of worship for Jews in New York. Most people in the middle colonies went to church. Many true Christians lived there, but many more did not know Jesus. So just because people came from all over, let's find this paper again, just because they came from all over Europe and brought their religions with them, doesn't mean that they had the same Christian religions. So some people believe different things about God and when they came and combined, it didn't necessarily have the same thoughts behind it. So the English and the Dutch and the Germans preferred to have their own separate churches to, to worship God in their own way. Let me see if I have the right paper. Okay, so that could cause some problems. This one is called the melting pot of religions. So here we have a couple different pictures of the different um, types of people who came to America or who were in America, like the Indians, they already were here, in all of their different beliefs. And when they all came to the middle colonies, Sometimes those beliefs mix together and kind of created a new religion. So some of those beliefs that were initially brought here were the Indians didn't believe that everyone needed Jesus. They didn't even know who Jesus was. And they worshipped spirits. They worshipped um, things that weren't in Christianity. Other people said that Jesus is the savior of the world. So that is true Christianity. That's what we believe, that Jesus is our savior. Other people said that Jesus is just a man. They didn't think that he was God. And other people said, I think I believe that he's God, he's man, but I don't necessarily need to worship him. So that created a big melting pot when all of the religions blended together. So, is it good to blend religions? What do you think? Is it good to say, we don't need to worship Jesus, we do need to worship Jesus, Jesus isn't really God, Jesus is God. Is that good? No, that's really confusing, right? The Bible says that we should follow exactly what it says. So, for the German and the Dutch and the English people to all mix together and start believing false things, that wasn't necessarily good for them. So that created problems. But Jesus is good, and he made sure that people still worshipped him, and the good news of the gospel kept going forth. So this one says religious in the middle colonies, and we're going to look at the cause and effect. So here we have... People looking for freedom of religion in Europe, and then they sailed to the middle colonies. They came from many different countries, and when they got to the middle colonies, they made separate churches so that they didn't blend their churches together. They had different religious beliefs. But sometimes, like I said before, those religious beliefs did get blended together into a melting pot, which wasn't always good. So it was good for them back then to make sure they understood what they believed and studied the Bible and rather than listen to all the other different people to make sure that they were believing the right things. So people from all over, the English, the Dutch, the Swedish, the Germans, they all came and settled in the middle colonies and they had different religions but sometimes they weren't that far apart from each other. But they had to make sure that their traditions and the way that they worship God 
didn't go against God's word. And so that's what a lot of people made sure about when they first moved here, that they were actually following God the right way. Okay, so these are some of the ways that the middle colonies experienced a melting pot. How their traditions for Christmas and holidays and building houses and religion all kind of blended together to create what we know of as American traditions. Okay, so feel free to go back and review the pages that we just read. And then you are going to complete an activity on page 133 in your activity.